Well, this game is just as I expected. Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer is a spin-off of Animal Crossing for Nintendo 3DS. What is it about? Well, to put it simple, you take the decorating part of New Leaf, remove everything else and make a game out of it. The concept didn't really sound that good to me to begin with. I mean, you just take a part of the game and make a whole game out of it for the same price as the complete game? Hence why my expectations were very low. But let's go forward uh, with the review. Happy Home Designer looks just like New Leaf, most likely using the exact same engine. But that's, that's not too surprising since New Leaf looked really, really nice. And so it does here, everything from the environments, characters and the HUD look nice and cute just like an Animal Crossing game should. The Happy Home Network is actually looking pretty impressive, well, too bad graphics don't matter much. But the graphics get 9 out of 10. New Leaf introduced brand new, higher quality music to the series. And I really like the whole soundtrack of the game. Happy Home Designer, while still good, is not as great or atmospheric and there is also not that much music. Again, it's not bad, but not as good. The sound effects are good, unless you find the animalis annoying, which I personally don't, I find it quite charming actually. And yeah, there isn't much more to say here. Audio gets 8 out of 10. The most important part of any game is the gameplay, and sadly, this is where Happy Home Designer falls flat, badly. This game is all about decorating houses for the villagers who request it, and you also get to decorate exteriors and some facilities like a school, and that's it. It's repetitive and gets old quickly, and not to mention it's shallow very shallow. There really isn't that much to do, there is no challenge whatsoever. You don't even get graded by any means. The villagers will love it no matter how bad you will make it as long as you put those favorite furnitures of those. There are like two or three that are already there, you don't even have to choose them. And once you are done all you can do is visit them. Yeah. The only place where you kinda get a score is the Happy Home Network where other players can rate your creations. But that still doesn't justify the fact that there's no real grading system, especially since New Leaf has points for style, so why the hell didn't they include that? I have no idea. Well, at least the touch interface for decorating is nice, but it takes a way a lot from the immersion the decorating gave you before when you had to move the furniture with your character. Well, you can still do it here. Oh, there's also no cash limit or anything. You can literally do whatever you please and as I mentioned before, they will like it anyway. You can also design the whole land plot outside of the house by first choosing one of the pre-made plots on the map. This is basically the same as interior design but outside. There are some small things that are good, for one, it's really adorable to see the animals actually use their furniture and there are some quite clever dialogues that add a little more character to the characters. And adding the half of a square to the placement grid is neat too. And I hope all of these things, as well as the exterior design, will be included in the next real Animal Crossing game. In general, is just as I originally expected. It's basically taking away everything from Animal Crossing and making it all about a single aspect of it. It could have been a DLC minigame for New Leaf, but you know, it all works flawlessly without any major packs, so gameplay gets 25 out of 50 points anyway. There is a lot of houses to design, as there are tons of villagers in the Animal Crossing universe, but it's still just decorating 
over and over and over again. In regular Animal Crossing, some people complain about how certain things take time, but there is always a lot of different things to do. Here there are no timed events, all you do is decorate and that repetitive nature makes it boring pretty quickly, so it's only fun in very small doses. You know what it should have been? An eShop game or a mobile title because that's what it feels like. Content and longevity get 10 out of 25 points. So this game introduces amiibo cards. It's like amiibo figurines, but in card form. And there will be 400 of those in total, just for this single game. Yep. Oh, and did I mention that these come in blind packs of 3 cards? Each pack for 80 Swedish kroner, which is about 8 euros. Yeah, that's right. To get all the cards, you would literally have to spend tens of thousands of Swedish kroner. I like the idea of Amiibo, I collect those I like, but this here is just awful money milking. I'm sorry, but there is no other way to describe it. Luckily though, only special characters actually unlock something you wouldn't be able to do in regular gameplay. Otherwise, all those cards do is bring the characters to the house to design or make them take the roles in the facilities. Or simply just like in Mario Maker bring those to your town whenever you want. And that's it, so it's not really even worth collecting. This is, in my opinion, the worst thing to come out of the idea behind Amiibo yet. Amiibo get 4 out of 10 points. But is the game fun? Yeah, in small doses, like if it was a mobile game, but in a long way, no, not really, and I'd much rather play Animal Crossing New Leaf instead. I really hope that this kind of games isn't what Nintendo will become, because, you know, I have high standards when it comes to Nintendo, and this is not the high standards of Nintendo. Fun Factor gets 12 out of 25 points. And now, let's sum it all up. Graphics, 9 out of 10. Audio, 8 out of 10. Gameplay, 25 out of 50. Content, 10 out of 25. Amiibo, 4 out of 10. Fun Factor, 12 out of 25. Which gives us a total score of... 68 out of 130. Which in the regular 1 to 10 scale gives us... 5.2 out of 10. It really hurts to give a score this low for a game in a series you love from a company that for a long time has stood for quality. But I won't fakely raise the score because is of that. The game is okay, but not worth the full price at all. And you know what, I'll just go back play New Leaf instead, because that game is much better, and you know what, you can probably find the game cheaper and get way more content out of that. So until next time, see ya!